Hello everyone, I'm Susan Lee McDonald and welcome back to The Interview. Who am I is a question that a lot of us ask. We all have questions about our identity. We have our nice side, we've got our evil side, we've got our curious side, and so many sides to just one person. And sometimes we need to know who we are. We're going to meet an artist who asks these very amazing questions about identity, finding out who she is through a lot of her artwork and photography. Let's get to meet the amazing Nikki Lee. Stripper, schoolgirl, lesbian, and yuppie. Can you believe that they are the same person? It's none other than the ever-transforming artist, Nikki S. Lee. She's an artist and photographer who is well-renowned in the world's number one art market, New York. The technique used for these photos seem amateur, but it is this seemingly effortless touch that grabs people's attention. Nikki Lee explores her identity through photography by constantly asking herself who she is in an effort to discover her true inner self. The candid interview with artist Nikki Lee, who seeks the significance of her existence by undergoing constant transformations, begins right now. Nikki Lee, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for being on my show. Oh, thank you, and thank you for inviting me here. Absolutely. Well, you're so well known in New York, uh, in the art world, and it's fantastic to have you here in Korea and to have your art displayed here. You have become an overnight sensation, well, years ago in New York, and the people just love your work. What do you think it is about your work that people love? Oh, I think people understand mm. like uh, my concept easily because mm -hmm. um, everybody has fantasy to be like to live other people's life or something, mm -hmm. and also it's photo. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the photo, it's the photos. It, it's just visually like simple to mm -hmm. to understand, and then and then also it's fun to watch it's the photos like how you know the artists change different way. Mm -hmm. I think those yeah, reasons probably. Tell me about what happened from when you started the idea of doing uh, basically a transformation of yourself. I went to FIT mm -hmm. for to study fashion photography mm -hmm. and then and I was working uh, for David Washapel's studio okay. and then I realized that after like six months oh fashion photo is not Fashion photos world mm -hmm. is not for me. Mm. I was a little struggled, like okay. difficult, and it's all business, business and everything. And and I was thinking maybe I want to make a make a work for myself. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to NYU to study okay. art and photo and mm -hmm. everything. And I had to make a work to graduate. Okay, homework. So was it like <laughs> a like a final project, like a student project or something? Yeah, it's a student project. Okay, and then. The project is the first uh, art piece I made, mm -hmm. and then I was thinking that time like what kind of art I want to make, mm -hmm. and I was thinking probably it has to be like from from my inside, yes, my story, mm -hmm. and and I was um, thinking what what is my what my interest is mm -hmm. and. Also, I was interested in identity issues, okay. so I kind of wanted to make a like snapshot 
documentary mm -hmm. quality combined with identity issues. Mm -hmm. and, and with the different types of works that you kind of created, how long did it actually take from the beginning to the end of, of getting this photo? Oh, uh, it's a project I spent like three or four months. Mm -hmm. So uh, two or three months for just preparing everything, buy clothes, mm -hmm. gain weight, lose weight, or change my outfit. You gained and lost weight? Exactly, yeah. Because wow. I gained a lot of weight uh, when I did Hispanic project. Okay. And I lost a lot of weight when I did like, exotic dancers. Uh -huh. uh, I spent like one month mm -hmm. for actually taking photos. Okay. And I didn't want to go more over a month because mm -hmm. it seems like it became a real life. I don't mm -hmm. know, it's just my feeling. Mm -hmm. After like a month, you know, I didn't feel like it's fake. I see. Yeah. So you almost felt like you were actually becoming that person? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huh. So I just wanted to have like month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a ridiculous probably mm -hmm. process. You know, to think about month is fake and then over month is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, just my rules. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. So as you were preparing for this this time period of a month, like how long did you normally kind of stay in that environment? Did you live with the people? Let's say like with the Hispanic project. Did you live in the Hispanic area? No, not really. Okay. Yeah, I go there and make a friend mm -hmm. and hang out with them and spend time with them mm -hmm. like for a month. Okay. But you know, I come, I came back home I at see. night and watching Korea, Korean drama <laughs> <laughs> to relax. <laughs> yes. Nikki Lee constantly explores the subject of identity through photography. She interacted with different types of people to portray various ethnic and social groups to show diverse identities. What did you learn from this direct experience of kind of interacting with the people that you were kind of portraying? I think probably I felt the uh, emotions like um, or people are from different cultures, mm -hmm. but you know, basic emotions from the life mm -hmm. is kind of same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yes. human beings. Yeah. That's, that's probably what I learned from mm -hmm. my project. Wow. But uh, all details and all cultures are different, mm -hmm. so people don't understand each other if, if culture is different, yes. actually. It's hard to understand, you know, mm -hmm. I think Western, Eastern, you know, or different religion, it's yes. the concept of the, the singing life is different. Mm -hmm. Emotion probably is, probably there are same emotions, yes. like sad and laugh and, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, the concept mm -hmm. of life probably is yeah. different from each culture, so. Definitely. Yeah. I think sometimes people find it very easy to stereotype a certain culture a certain way, but there are certain similarities uh, between cultures. Did you yep. find that there are more similarities, similarities than differences? Oh, I mean, for example, like a Jewish culture and Korean culture probably mm -hmm. a little similar, mm -hmm. you know? In what ways? And working hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, this kind of stereotypes, but working hard mm -hmm. also. But at the same time, Hispanic culture and Korean culture, their similarity, they play hard too, mm -hmm. you know? So each culture has kind of, you know, uh, similarity. Yeah. yeah. If you look at it like that, then the Korean culture not only works really hard, but plays hard. So yeah. we have the best of both worlds, is that right? <laughs> best or worst? <laughs> 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 so, Looking at all of the art that you've done here, um, I'm guessing that you might have a particularly favorite experience while mm -hmm. making this art. Do you have one that you can share oh, with us? Each project has different memories mm -hmm. and different experience. So I don't have favorite, but mm -hmm. some like experience are unique. Mm -hmm. For example, exotic dancers. Cause, yes, that yeah, must have been interesting. I know. I mean, I, I remember the first day I danced in front of people, mm -hmm. I was so shaking because you know I never wow. be mm -hmm. half naked in front of people. I believe that the kind of courage it takes for someone to 
to become an exotic dancer is very different than you know becoming uh, a, a tourist or a punk, uh, a yuppie for the art that you're doing. And so I imagine that the first time that you got up on that stage to dance must have been pretty terrifying. When I was young, yeah, yeah not anymore. <laughs> but so I was very nervous, mm -hmm. and then and then I was kind of like shaking, and then the guys in front of me like, oh, why you are so, why you look so nervous? And I was like, because this is the first time. And then the guys like, oh, mm -hmm. first time, yeah, <laughs> typical. <laughs> <laughs> So after you did your dance, now did you choreograph your own dance too? No, I didn't. I just did you just you know? No, no, not I cannot just do disco. <laughs> I had to do like pole dance. Okay. So wasn't it difficult to do the pole dance? That's a lot of work. Well, if you want to be really professional, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You have to climb. <laughs> but um, I just did it like you know casual way. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that much hard and it's not a Las Vegas mm -hmm. club, mm -hmm. it's in like middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it was like like kind of easy going, so yeah. it was okay. <laughs> wow. And what did the other exotic dancers say about you? Well, they knew that I'm an artist because I told them mm -hmm. from the beginning, but but the more I worked there, they just forget about it. <laughs> so one Saturday night, I was sitting behind and they, they, they came to me like, Nikki, what are you doing? You have to make money. This is big night. Just go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that your experience of, of getting prepared for that role is really exciting to mm -hmm, hear. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've got a lot of other stories. Is there something else, a, a project that you worked on that also had some kind of interesting story behind it? Um, for example, like seniors, because mm -hmm. I had a, like really thick makeups and looks like you know grandma, mm -hmm. and then I always told people like I'm an artist, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. want to make a lie or something. So uh, I remember one day I totally you know changed to senior, mm -hmm. and then I went to park. Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of grandmas mm -hmm. sitting there, so I introduced myself. Hi, you know, I'm a, I look old, but I'm not old. I'm a student. I'm from Korea, and then and then they're like, oh, okay. And then we talk and talk and like whole day, like you know, the grandma like to talk about her life from the like Moscow to <laughs> East Europe, wow. and this this just takes whole day, mm -hmm. and then. And then later on, I was like, oh, okay, so I can see you later. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then they just grab my hands like, oh, you must really miss your grandson in Korea, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't believe. They, they kind of thought like I'm kind of goo goo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> wow. Did you ever go back just as yourself and not dressed up as a senior? I see like, you know, grandmas and supermarkets and but they don't really recognize me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I kind of thought like maybe I can go there and say hello, but I don't want them to be shocked or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's too confused. Yeah. So, I can I can yeah, see yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, you don't want to cause them to have a heart attack. Exactly. You just seem to really love life, Nikki. I mean, just talking with you here, uh, just and I've gotten to know you only recently. You just have this kind of energy and kind of zest about you, and I think that really comes out through your work. Oh, uh, I think every art it, it says artist. I think when you see art and then you mm -hmm. can imagine what kind of artist mm -hmm. you know he, he is or she is mm -hmm. and then also my work is kind of def like obvious in a way or not obvious in a way because it's me and at the same time it's not me mm -hmm. <laughs> so there is like little you know irony mm -hmm. as you say the energy of work probably you know came from my energy mm -hmm. so I think if I made like honest work, probably that energy go on. Yeah. I am free. I can become anyone. Don't ask me who I am. Her works 
considered as experiments on diverse identities, are in the collection of a number of museums, including the Museum of Modern Art, the Guggenheim, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. So here we've got some of your lovely artworks, and I'd love to have you tell me specifically what you were thinking when you created this one. Oh, this is lesbian project, mm -hmm. and then I told them also like, you know, I'm not a lesbian, but I'm doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. I kind of pick up my characters like really tough and, you know, macho side, mm -hmm. and put it in. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the, uh, like lesbian club. Okay. And Did they ever at any point feel like you were maybe making fun of them or making maybe just uh, looking at them in a, a way that they didn't want to be perceived? Honestly, I never had a uh, intention to make fun of people because mm -hmm. I don't need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then also I uh, I have a lot of like gay and lesbian friends, mm -hmm. so there's no point like mm -hmm. what's make one of them and yeah. then if people don't not comfortable to be in my pictures mm -hmm. I said yeah mm -hmm. like, okay you know mm -hmm. don't need to be mm -hmm. yeah. so so this this was the lesbian kind of series uh, let's move on to the next one which mm -hmm. is what tourist tourist so here is a completely different look from the last mm -hmm. one and you absolutely <laughs> look like a tourist here <laughs> and here when I see the the photo the whole point is actually, isn't it, to get the whole Statue of Liberty in there? But yeah, but my friend took these pictures, mm -hmm. and I told her like just make sure I'm in it. So she just focused on me. So she chopped, you know, her head. But which <laughs> makes this this image very interesting. Yes. You know, because everybody knows what it is. So it's mm -hmm. like funny, like ha ha ha, you know. And yeah. that quality, I love it. Yeah. It's like accidental. Yeah. You know? Images. I love the fact that you have non-professionals take these photos mm -hmm. and also the fact that you have the timestamp here. Mm -hmm. Is this is this kind of on purpose or did yeah, you put this in afterwards? On purpose. Okay. This is like kind of very old fashion because mm. nobody do this in these days. Yes. And and also somehow I manipulate this date as well. Okay. Because people believe like oh this is 97 in August. So maybe mm -hmm. not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this was actually done when? Uh, 97, but, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not, you know, not on maybe 27, maybe yeah. 28. This is classic. I love this one. <laughs> so as we walk down here, what are some of the other ones that you want to show me? Uh, let's see, Hispanic, Yelpies. Maybe we can talk about skateboarders. Okay, so, so looking at you here, I mean, you're at a pretty high angle here. Now, right. did you yeah, do I did skateboarding? Like, yeah, I do. I really? Do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was tough. So to be at this angle, you've got to be a pretty good skateboarder. Did you naturally know how to skateboard in Korea or something? No, <laughs> I got along. So I went to uh, oh. Riverside Park Okay. and then hang out with the skateboarders. Mm -hmm. So I learned from skateboarders. That's incredible. Yeah, so this, but this is not a New York, this is San Francisco. Okay. And then I it was really difficult mm. to to do the skateboarders project but at the same time it was fun because not so many girls just like i'm the only asian girl yeah <laughs> so it was fun actually wow yeah. did you fall and hurt a lot yes <laughs> yes oh no no pain no gain <laughs> wow so tell us about this project. You look very different here. This is not kind of the Nikki Lee that's are standing in front of me. This is a, a very different person. What's going on here? Well, this is a hip hop project. Mm -hmm. So I went to a tennis salon three times, two or three times a week for really? two months. So this, to is, make this my is not makeup? Dark. Well, it is also makeup as well, but okay. basically my skin was very dark because wow. you know my body and my face tone is kind of same, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't do put the makeup in my body. Wow! So that was my skin tone at the time. So my skin was really dry and really mm -hmm. bad, and I was afraid, like, oh my god, I'm never gonna go back to. Uh, my, you know, original skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a little afraid. <laughs> wow. So, so you actually went to this physical kind of extreme for mm -hmm. you. Had you ever tanned like this before? No. Wow. Oh. Yeah. So, so you tanned. What else did you do that was different that's not part of your normal life? I also saved my eyebrow, mm -hmm. so I made a really thin. Oh wow, I, I definitely yeah. noticed that. Yes. Yeah, thin eyeliner. Mm -hmm. And 
like African American culture, mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hang out with a lot of African Americans and like listen to a lot of hip hop music mm -hmm. and celebrities like birthday party or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, hip hop culture. <laughs> yeah, well, it seems like you definitely captured the moment here. And, and out of curiosity, how many times did you have to mm -hmm. take photos uh, to get this particular shot? Like uh, several hundred or? No, it's only like three times, three oh, shots. Three like, times. Yeah, like one, two, three, you know, usually people do. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to have many uh, options okay. to select. Mm -hmm. I just want things like really like ordinary people do it, mm -hmm. like the snapshot and just, you know, uh, one to three shots. Nikki Lee isn't a photographer. She is an artist whose series of portraits caused an sensation. Then, who were the ones behind the camera lens? Surprisingly, her photos are taken by non-professional photographers. Artists and art enthusiasts in New York, the world's number one art center, remember her as an innovative artist who broke the conventions of photography. What is it that you try to show the audience through your work? Uh, I'm not really trying to say something, actually. Mm. Um, I kind of want to share about my concept Mm -hmm. about identity mm -hmm. with the people. Mm -hmm. Look at this, you know, identity can be changed. Mm. People has a lot of different uh, characters themselves mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. and uh, there are so many uh, questions about identities mm -hmm. and this is the way how I look mm -hmm. at the identities, mm -hmm. those kind of Growing up, did you ever have any identity issues? Because I know you grew up here in Korea where your identity is you know, Korean, yeah, yeah, Korean, yeah. native Korean. Yeah. Um, so Never. I didn't even mm -hmm. <laughs> know what like identity is. Like never, like I have like identity issues from the outside mm -hmm. because I'm, I was born in Korea, grew mm -hmm. up in Korea with the Korean people. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think myself, you know, I always feel I have like different kind of various characters inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, I was thinking like like when I was young teenage mm -hmm. teenagers, I was thinking, oh, it's better. Like guy told me that I like this kind of type of girl, and I can be that girl. You know, because mm -hmm. I can be every girl. Like if this guy likes, let's say very shy and lovely girl. Mm -hmm. I can be very shy and lovely girl. Mm -hmm. But then, like, guy B mm -hmm. likes, like, tough and, you know, funny girl. I can be tough and funny girl. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it makes me too easy mm -hmm. <laughs> to be, you know, other, like, different kind of, you know, types. Yes. So that's kind of identity issues mm -hmm. about myself, probably, mm -hmm. when I grew up. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's gap, you know, mm -hmm. people sometimes are confused, like, oh, I want to be this person like this kind of character, but mm -hmm. I am this kind of character, you mm -hmm. know? Then they try to be, you know, this kind of characters, but it's hard to be, you know? Yeah. And, and th they don't want to reveal that I'm this kind of character, you know? Yeah. So that's my struggles too when, mm -hmm. I, when I was young, but I decide to be honest and, <laughs> and just forget it, you know? Yeah. It's like, I'm like this, and if you like, or if you don't like, fine, you know? Because yeah. I think, um, I have more like guts about myself mm -hmm. through whole this kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's never easy to kind of reveal who we are really mm -hmm. internally mm -hmm. to others and mm -hmm. also to ourselves. So mm -hmm. I think it's a really courageous thing for you to just say, "This is who I am. Like it or leave it." Yeah, it's <laughs> hard, but I tried. Yeah. I tried, and then this also make things better mm -hmm. you know for example this kind of interview I can decide myself like oh I maybe look very serious and you know intellectual and like like kind of you know the elegant mm -hmm. artist mm -hmm. you know I can wear elegant clothes and and everything and talking about like philosophy and everything but it's not me mm. and I, I can pretend mm -hmm. like that actually mm -hmm. if I cannot just forget it, but I, I am able to. Mm -hmm. That makes me very 
struggles like mm -hmm. before when I was young because I gotta choose because I am able to do this mm -hmm. but and then when I was young I choose the things like I want it to be yeah. but it's not I realized that after like mm -hmm. it's not charming mm -hmm. so um, I decide you know I can just be myself yeah. it makes more sense yes <laughs> yeah just funny person <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're yourself. Thank you for being yourself on the show. <laughs> Nikki, so many people who take photographs, uh, you know, get, they get the big DSLR cameras and they put a lot of money and effort into doing these, you know, incredibly elaborate setups. But from what I understand, you use just a simple point and shoot camera right. for your work. Uh, just different reasons. First of all, I didn't have money to rent like huge cameras mm -hmm. and then second this is like documentary format okay. so uh, it has to be really like humble mm -hmm. otherwise other people feel like threatened mm -hmm. you know so I just wanted to uh, make people feel like comfortable I see so little camera helps that mm -hmm. also I used the snapshot camera like quality because mm -hmm. um, I kind of wanted to, uh, my work is that like if you pick up, let's say my picture, one of my projects, yes. picture from the street, like, you know, accidentally, yes. you look at it and like, oh, this is like punk pictures, like mm -hmm. punk with a, there is a little Korean here. Mm -hmm. So uh, make people believe it. Mm -hmm. So the snapshot, snapshot quality really help mm -hmm. to make people believe this is real. I see. Yeah. Wow. And I heard that a lot of times you would ask passers-by to take photos. So they were not professional people who took photos. Yeah, friends also. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So why is it that you decided to uh -huh. use uh -huh. non-professionals? Because uh -huh. I wanted to have really boring snapshot camera quality. Mm. So everybody can take a picture of uh, those quality. Mm -hmm. So. I don't want to have professional compositions mm -hmm. and very, you know, nice looking pictures. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to have like a snapshot, take a picture. So I asked friend just give the camera and then she's like, you know, okay, let's smile and then just make sure don't chop my head because <laughs> <laughs> I have to be in it. Mm -hmm. So to make sure those things. But honestly, I studied photography for 10 years. So I know all technical stuff. So yes. just the way she holding camera or like, you know, standing the way, you know, her, you know, attitude, mm -hmm. I knew, already knew how picture came out. I see. So I can kind of control like, you know, if I want it to be a center, I can move myself like this. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. To make sure that you're in yeah, the shot. Yeah, yeah. Nikki, in a different project that you did called the Parts Series, mm -hmm. um, you basically blurred some people, you cut them out, there's only like a hand appearing right, here right. and there. Uh, what was the concept be behind the layout mm -hmm. here? Actually, after our project, I was kind of wondering uh, what identity means between um, personal relationships. Mm -hmm. So I realized that when I uh, had a relationship with different guys, let's say mm -hmm. A or B, mm -hmm. I kind of felt that like I kind of changed myself depends on what kind of guy mm -hmm. I'm with. I see. So let's say guy A, I became like really baseball person, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though I don't like baseball mm -hmm. and like become like a sweet and nice to the guy A. But if I say guy B, I kind of realize that I always feel like angry or, mm -hmm. you know, not sweet and, mm -hmm. you know, just different way. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, why? Mm. You know, I'm the same person, Nikki. You know, but why I am changing depends on you know what kind of guy yeah. I'm with. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to s make something about it. I see. Yeah. So, parcels. I took a picture with guy, and then cut off you know the <laughs> other personal. Mm -hmm. And then there is like hands and shoes and some evidence what kind of guy he mm -hmm. is. So it's more about identity in the relationship, the I personal see. relationship. 
I know that I've experienced this in personal relationships. You know, sometimes people bring out the best in you, right? Yep. And so yeah. you're your best self. You're <laughs> right, happy, right. laughing, always right. just you know sweet and yeah. cheerful. And some people will definitely bring out the worst in you. And yeah. and all of these different characteristics are in one person. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the kind of thing that you're trying to show through the yeah? The why parts? identity changed? Mm. You know, in with with a different. Mm -hmm. uh, people. So did you come up with an answer, you know, why does your identity change with each of these different people? I think it's about uh, energy, you know. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in, in Eastern culture called Kung Hap, yes. you know, even friend or, mm -hmm. you know, lovers. It's mm -hmm. like, Kung Hap means, you know, the energy, you know, like each other, how go together. Yeah. 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 I think that's the proper answer. <laughs> that's interesting. Now, I know that uh, with, with the parts, you know, some people may view this as totally original, but some people might be like, I could do that too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did you want to have that feeling that anyone can do this art, but you were one of the first people to do this, or what do you say to the comments? Our project or parts, everybody does come to the show and says like, oh, I can do this, you know? They feel that way, you know? Which makes me feel good, mm. because, you know, you can go, at, go home and think about it, why, your snapshot cannot be an art, and my snapshot can be an mm. art. They are not an uh, artist, you know. Mm -hmm. so they are not thinking about art all the time, but I'm thinking about art time. Right. So <laughs> to, to spend the time, <laughs> right? It's you know, I. This is my life, you know, mm -hmm. to think about worry about. <laughs> yes. They don't worry about identities. <laughs> I worry about identities. <laughs> yeah. Who is that person next to her? Nikki Lee's parts series are comprised of pictures of her with different men whose faces cannot be seen, as if she had ripped these pictures after a breakup. Leaving only a trace of the male partner's presence, his hand or torso, for example, stimulated people's interest and imagination. I'd like to kind of go into how you began photography. Well, I love films, mm -hmm. movies, mm -hmm. when I was in high school. So honestly, I wanted to be an actress, mm. but one day I look at the mirror and I look at myself like, oh, you are not enough, pretty enough to oh. be an actress. And then um, I think I was smart <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to realize I cannot be an like, actress. And then um, I thought myself then I can just maybe direct mm -hmm. film. I want to make a film. So I asked my parents, I want to go you know, uh, university to study film. Mm -hmm. And then my parents doesn't like that idea. Mm. And then uh, my parents suggest me, why don't you go to photography school? Then you can learn photography mm -hmm. and it's related to film and everything. Because mm -hmm. my dad, mm -hmm. he went to photography school, same oh, school really? with me. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. At, at a alumni. different time? Yeah, oh, different time, wow. of course. <laughs> so I thought, hmm, that's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So I went to photography school. Interesting. But I hate it. I hate taking pictures. I hate mm. like the carry camera around. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fresh year, like I was really terrible. But but after one year, I kind of love um, how to say the meaning of photography, like mm -hmm. photography itself. Okay. I mean, I still don't like taking picture, but mm -hmm. I love photography. Mm -hmm. You know, context. Yes. So that's the, uh, I think, uh, time mm -hmm. I start to do photography seriously. Interesting. Yeah. Earlier you said that your father uh, went to the same school as you for photography. Um, now, I'm assuming that uh, as a photographer he you know, is an artistic person. I think we have same blood. <laughs> so I think, you know, my or like kind of artistic, uh, uh, talent mm -hmm. from I think my father same blood. Wow. Yeah. Now what does your father think of your art? Uh, 
I gotta ask. <laughs> you still haven't asked your father? No, but he really loves my work. <laughs> and then, I mean, one thing, you know, about my father, he's from Gyeongsangdo, you know, mm -hmm. he's like really typical Korean guy. And when he look at my books, he saw uh, Exotic Dancers project, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like half naked and all day. And then I was wondering like what he's gonna say, but he's like, you know, um, can you explain about this concept? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I can explain to my friends. Because mm. he wants, wants to show my books to his friends, which yes. is like a bunch of Gyeongsangdo guy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they have like turtles pictures. Mm -hmm. So like, so he really wants to understand uh, what kind of concept it is and mm -hmm. like seriously. Yes. So he really wants to like explain his friend mm -hmm. like a uh, like serious way yeah. about my work. And I really appreciate that moment, you mm -hmm. know. That's really touching that he really yeah. wanted to see it from the artistic point exactly. of view. Because yeah. that's why exactly. you did this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. very proud of my, you know, dad. That's so yeah. great. You are married, yes? Yes. <laughs> I, yes. And I hear that it was kind of a romantic love story how you met. Um, it is very unusual. Mm. <laughs> it sounds like my life is full of unusual things. <laughs> Um, I had a dinner with a with a uh, one of my collector that night, and then and then we walk in the street. Was this in New York City? Or? Yeah, it's in New York City. Okay. And then we walk in the street at night, late night, and then I saw one guy just standing in the street, mm -hmm. and then I just look at him, and then he looks really nice. To me, mm -hmm. he, he is like really handsome. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, he's so handsome. I just look at it. And then he looked at me mm. and he didn't stop. He just like uh, keep looking at me. So I just keep looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> so we passed like this, uh -huh. you know? And then I went to like other, you know, restaurant. And then in my head, like just thinking about him, oh my God, he's so handsome. But you know, it's just, we already passed. And in the, in the street, it's just gone, you know? So I felt like, tired so <laughs> I wanted to home, home, come back home so mm -hmm. I walk you know like same street mm -hmm. walk back and then and then I you know look I was looking at him at the same spot but he wasn't there he was gone of course but I found like German restaurant over there like bar and restaurant mm -hmm. and I kind of felt like maybe he's inside of the restaurant huh so I asked the you know uh, collector to go inside together have like drink mm -hmm. so we went in and then he was there really so yeah. based on intuition that exactly. he might potentially be there you went there and he was there yep. that's wow. the, that's how we met yeah so did you approach him and say hey I saw you you saw me <laughs> <laughs> I asked him I asked my husband later like did you notice that I stopped by because of you and he's like yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. So how did you then start to get to date and get to talk and all that? Oh, so that night I asked him like, are you Korean? And he's like, yes. So I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him like brief, you know, questions. Mm -hmm. And then that's the, you know, that's the first time like we kind of felt, you know, same chemistry together mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we date later and and it happened. And now how many years later is this now? Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Goodness, wow. It's like a scene out of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, you know, kind of, kind of maybe I can make a short film about, you know, our story, but it sounds very cheesy because it's very, you know, like movie-like. Mm -hmm. So if I want to make a movie, it's so movie-like, so it's so cheesy. <laughs> I like Star and I want to be a star. <laughs> Nikki Lee has been involved in a wide range of activities in addition to photography. She filmed a documentary movie and had street artists draw her portrait as a way to explore her identity yet again. And in 2013, Nikki Lee is opening up a new chapter in her life as an artist by undertaking another creative project that deals with the notions of identity.
So let's talk a little bit about your recent works. Tell me about what you've done recently. Uh, I did, uh, I made a documentary. Mm -hmm. It's called AKA Nikki S. Lee, hmm. which is 60 minutes a documentary about uh, two Nikki Lee. Two I Nikki Lee's, yeah, okay. I made um, two Nikki Lee's artists. So like one is very stereotypes and typical artists and mm -hmm. the other one is like very like unusual mm -hmm. kind of like artist. Mm -hmm. So I played my myself actually as an artist mm. because whenever I go to lectures and at the, at the airport and people pick me up and then they are like first you know uh, impression is like oh you look different than I thought huh so I was like okay what did you expect <laughs> now I expect Nikki is like blah 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 so I asked people like what did you expect you know do I look different from the pictures and do I look different from than you thought and mm -hmm. so I realized a lot of people imagine sneakies and this way or that mm -hmm. way so I thought maybe I can make a documentary about this way and that way Interesting. <laughs> yeah, so it's called aka Nikki mm -hmm. I made it like 2006 mm -hmm. and it's premiered at the uh, MoMA mm -hmm. in New York and then it went to Berlin Film Festival mm -hmm. and Hong Kong and then I made a new work called Layers. Layers? Yeah. Tell us about that. Layers means uh, layers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> layers of identity. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever I go to uh, different countries, I see people who draw tourist face okay. you know, around the park yes. or something. Every country. Yeah, I've seen every that everywhere. Yeah. In Korea as well. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, is if I go to Paris and did some portrait, or if I go to uh, Brazil, did some portrait, mm -hmm. do I look same, mm. or do I look different? Do I look the person like Peruvian mm -hmm. or Brazilian? Mm -hmm. And I was curious how they gonna see me, mm -hmm. and how drawings gonna look the same or not. You okay. Know? So and I went to all different kind of like cities mm -hmm. and then draw my face different uh, like let's say three people mm -hmm. and then I came back home and then I put together like three drawings yes and then uh, I put light uh, under mm -hmm. the drawings and then I took a picture and then I switched the order okay so I made a three uh, drawing slash pictures from huh. Yeah, different cities, drawings. Wow. And then also it shows how to say layers of my face. Mm -hmm. And it also uh, connects to the idea about identity. Mm -hmm. Like which is, let's say, I have a friend who is very uh, outgoing mm -hmm. and funny and mm -hmm. laughing person. So I always thought she's very, you know, funny and laughing. Mm -hmm. But she told me that one day, like, you know, I'm very shy. Mm. So she knew that from the beginning when she was young, she is very shy. Mm -hmm. So she tried so hard to not to be a shy. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's why she laughed a lot. And, <laughs> and but wow. she basically she was very shy person. Huh. So I I was thinking like, oh my God, if people's like this mm -hmm. to understand other people really deeply, mm -hmm. it's so hard, yeah. you know. Like I have to across the breeze to to go like inside mm -hmm. of other person to understand weird deep inside of other mm -hmm. person, you mm -hmm. know. So so many layers yeah. and the personality. So that also gave me the motivation to wow. make layers. Let me ask you about the time period between the, the new and recent works that you've been working on and your last documentary project. So there was maybe about a six year kind Four of... Four years. And I learned. Oh my God, five and six years? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so there's now I feel really guilty. <laughs> So there's been that kind of uh, time where you weren't really showing a lot of your art. Uh, were you in a slump? Were you uh, just in the creative phase? What was going on during that time that you weren't kind of Everything producing? Everything actually. Yeah? It's uh, I move. 
mm -hmm. from New York to Seoul, so it's like transition. Okay. And also, I support my husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds very asthma, but you know, I love you know to support my family and mm -hmm. my husband. Mm -hmm. so, and and plus also, I made my work for ten years. Mm -hmm. So and I kind of felt I need time mm. to just you know far away from everything I what see. I did. And then I wanted to start new, you know. Do you feel like that time away from your art during that time was, was necessary? Uh, or do you regret having kind of not worked harder? It's not necessary or it's not regret or something. It has to be mm. because uh, the time of transition mm -hmm. plus and I didn't, how to say, um, I always believe that I want to make something what I feel like mm -hmm. want to make something because mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really try not to make a work uh, if I need you know money to sell or something so um, I think uh, that's the time probably I didn't kind of feel like it to make a work as mm -hmm. well so now are you working on a film project I hear yeah, yeah. I'm working on film and also uh, moving images. Mm -hmm. So moving images is for art. Film mm -hmm. is for, for <laughs> let's say commercial film. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you're doing two separate projects. Yes. Interesting. Exactly. Tell us about the, the moving images project. Uh, moving images. Um, I, I cannot explain like really specific right now details because mm -hmm. it's in process. I see. Uh, yeah, but. Um, I kind of wanted to do something like, um, you know, when you desperate something, at the end, you feel very empty, right? Mm. Or like vanity mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Or when you feel very empty and vanity of life, you, sometimes you feel very desperate, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about it. Okay. <laughs> so it's about desperation? And um, the vanity. emptiness of... The yeah, emptiness, emptiness of, of vanity? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds very <laughs> it, it does sound very philosophical. Is it something that's easily captured in moving images? Uh, not easily probably, but I'm trying. Mm. But uh, well, from the outside, probably it doesn't feel that way, probably. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, look at it, mm -hmm. and the emotion is probably okay. coming out from that. I see. Yeah, emotion. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. And you are also working on a film project, you said that's commercial, so are we talking like an actual film that we'll see in a theater? Yep. Okay. Yep. Tell us about that project. Well, I, I wrote a script. And interesting. And I have two scripts, mm -hmm. which is very melodrama. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm working on that script too, okay. and with the melodrama is going to come out probably, you know, late next year or something, but okay. this year, uh, I wrote a script about actress. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's, it's about actress. Okay. Yeah. So I cast like top star. Wow. And then now in the process of, of uh, you know, getting money. Okay. Yeah. So you're in the funding stages of your movie project. Exactly. You've already cast the lead actress. Mm -hmm. Now, are you the lead actress? No. <laughs> oh, so nobody's going to give money then. <laughs> So who, may I ask who you've selected as the lead actress? Um, I don't know if I can tell now. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but you can see soon. Okay. Yeah. And when will you start uh, with the actual production? Uh, I hope this autumn or like uh, in the fall, mm -hmm. but it depends on how mm -hmm. funding situation. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the story. You said it's about an actress. Um, tell me more. I'm interested. Oh, it's actress's identity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot really say this, this scenario because mm -hmm. it's a black comedy in a way. Okay. Yeah, and then also a uh, fake documentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like fake documentary, black comedy, Woody Allen ish, plus um, drama. Mm -hmm. And Nikki Lee. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe there's chance I can be in the f in in the film as well as an uh, director. 
Well, you know, I really wish you all the best with all the things that you're doing in the future. And if there's something that I can ask you, that I ask of all of my guests, to you, what do you consider art? Art to me, um, the things, it's like family. Sometimes I hate it, but I love it, but I cannot, how to say, get out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Nikki Lee, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you today. And um, uh, I really think that it's been uh, a really fun time to talk with you. Oh, you're, I had you're, fun too. <laughs> yeah, you're just, you're just a joy to talk to. And I really appreciate you being here with me. Oh, thank you. Great, thank yeah, you so I much. I really had a great time. Awesome, thank Thanks. you. Hope to see you again. Hope to see you again. <laughs>